Colleges in the Twin Ports are preparing to welcome students back to campus in the midst of a pandemic. With the situation changing seemingly by the day, university officials are keeping their plans fluid. Here with the latest update is Dr. Renee Wachter, Chancellor of the University of Wisconsin-Superior, and Dr. Lenley Black is the Chancellor of the University of Minnesota Duluth. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so very much for joining us. Lots of information that people really <laughs> need to know. Uh, Dr. Black, let's start with you. Uh, the university recently made the announcement that they are delaying the start of school. Can you tell us about that? Yes, on uh, Monday morning, the Board of Regents made a decision to delay the beginning of face-to-face -face classes uh, for two weeks from the days in which they were scheduled originally, and also to delay move-in for a period of two weeks. So we are uh, busily uh, making plans and preparations. Uh, instead of beginning on August 31st, as originally scheduled, we are hoping that we'll be able to start on September 14th. Um, and we would have the move-in, if, if classes are starting on the 14th, we would hope to have move-in the week before, around September the, the 9th. How soon could you start allowing uh, potential students to, to know exactly when they might move back in? Well, we're hoping to know within a week. Uh, we're watching things very carefully. We're watching uh, the data research regarding the pandemic and how it's progressing. We're looking at the uh, COVID rates in St. Louis County. We're looking at the trends in the uh, demographics of our students, basically focused on 18 to 24 year olds. And we're also uh, continuing to make sure our campus is as safe as possible mm -hmm. and certainly as safe as any public space and which we think we've, we're already ready for that. So we're, we're looking at the trends, looking at the data, seeing if there be any changes uh, within the state particularly, but also nationally in terms of the ways that in which we're, we need to deal with the pandemic. Dr. Wachter, what are you doing at UWS? Boy, it's been a, a comprehensive lift all summer long, preparing for a number of scenarios, not exactly sure what we were going to encounter this fall. So we actually had our faculty, 95% participate in a uh, summer kind of boot camp for faculty to get their skills ready for making a switch if we needed to go online. In the meantime, we've done the same thing. We've been preparing facilities with social distancing standards, putting in plexiglass, buying 55-gallon drums of hand sanitizer from Vickery Distillery, equipping our classrooms, and we're very proud to say that because of the efforts of our interim president, Tommy Thompson, we have a very comprehensive testing plan ready for students when they arrive. So mm -hmm. we'll be able to do some surveillance testing with antigen testing to see if very quickly identify and isolate if there seems to be an outbreak occurring. So we're, we're ready to go as at, much at, as anybody could be. Sure. At UWS, have you noticed any uh, potential student cutback because of the pandemic? Are kids uh, a little reluctant to maybe go to college right now? You know, I think there are some. It's It's been a really interesting uh, phenomenon to watch and to hear what the concerns are. There are some that really want that full college experience and they know that life is gonna look different this fall and so they've decided to sit out. Um, one of the things that we, we did create was something called Plan U, which was for that gap year for students. If that's the choice that they wanted to make, they could still make some progress in their studies. Um, but there are others that wanna come back even under the restricted conditions that they know they'll face. And we've been very good about communicating all the way along about the kinds of things that they should expect when they come to campus, mm -hmm. including wearing face coverings and social distancing and restrictions on dining and... Mm -hmm. Dr. Black, is, is your registration where it should be? Well, it's, it's, we're holding our own reasonably well, but we have seen a decrease, although it's a little difficult to compare. Usually we track the data from one year to the next and look at enrollments on particular dates throughout the, the summer and certainly going into the fall. And, and since this is such an unusual uh, time, it's difficult to get a, a really good comparison but uh, I, I think we, we certainly will see some decrease uh, right now. It does not look like it's going to be a major one for us. And we are also working uh, very closely uh, with students and helping them uh, understand what the, uh, what the options are and helping them to make the transition back to campus as soon as, as possible. What's being done to keep students safe at your school? Well, we have um, done a thorough job and I really, really appreciate our staff in particular. They've been working on the campus all summer long. 
because we've had some staff and researchers on campus uh, throughout the summer. And now as we're preparing for students to come back, we've done thorough sanitizing and cleaning of the campus. Uh, we are also using uh, various things in terms of uh, plexiglass shields. Uh, we have a Stop the COVID-19 initiative, which is uh, an initiative of uh, posters and communication that tells people mm -hmm. what they need to do. Uh, we do have a mask requirement on campus. Uh, we are also uh, encouraging people to check their symptoms. We are also having them focus on the appropriate physical distancing sure. and also uh, to be careful of their contacts off campus mm -hmm. uh, as well as what happens on campus. So Dr. we feel Walker, very sure. ready for, for students to come back. Mm -hmm. Dr. Walker, what are you doing at UWS for student safety? So very much the same thing. So everything has been prepared with that in mind. It's been a, a huge lift by our facility staff in terms of making sure all of our classrooms are have the appropriate capacity, are spaced appropriately to maintain that six foot distance plexiglass to uh, ensure the instructor's signage about where those six foot uh, spaces are, arrows to keep people coming uh, one way in stairways, limiting people in the elevator, accelerated cleaning schedules, um, and, and then again for those students that are residential mm -hmm. in the residence halls, the, the antigen testing once every two weeks. Are either of you finding your school is having a, a difficult time in trying to keep students from gathering en masse, large groups, large parties? At this point, no. We've done a, a comprehensive campaign to really try to, not, not so much the stick approach, but really trying to encourage them this culture of care, that we are a family, to exercise good judgment, um, and then really trying to provide activities for them that can allow them to still get together but do it in a socially distant, responsible way. Uh -huh. Dr. Black? Well, and that, that we're watching that closely, and that is certainly a concern of ours. We also have had a campaign with the students coming back to campus, uh, cautioning them about the dangers of being in large crowds. Uh, we've also, I, I've sent uh, personal letters to members of the Chamber of Commerce and the Downtown Association asking them to partner with us in the restaurants and bars and other gathering places with students to try to help keep students as safe as yeah. possible. A any uh, particular problems for international students? I think the hardest for them has been getting visas to come and and being able to to physically get here and so you know that that plan you package that I described is is a appropriate for some of them and some of them have taken up on that saying okay I can't get in and I can't get in to get my visa now but I'll, I'll look forward to the spring or even next fall but yes it's still very challenging I mm -hmm. think for some of those students are unfortunately you, the US is the hotbed <laughs> it is yeah are you hearing the same thing absolutely we're also struggling although we have had some of our international students been, been they are able to come back uh, we do have uh, special residence hall spaces uh, for them um, as well as our other uh, returning and new students. Uh, so we're, we're uh, paying uh, particular attention to them and we uh, enjoy the resources of the University of Minnesota system, which has a very, um, mm -hmm. a very thorough and detailed international uh, office and initiative that, sure. that helps us with our international students. We're running short of time. What technology might students need to have if they're going to be a stay-at-home student? A, a really good computer. A lot of broadband width it, uh, and, and width and depth and breadth, uh, and um, the uh, ability to sit and enjoy zooms. <laughs> it's going to be different. <laughs> it will be different. But. Same with you, doctor. The same as well. And what we've also done too is knowing that there is the possibility of a switch online, is really making sure that the campus uh, network has been upgraded and additional Wi-Fi spots sure. throughout and in the parking lot. Right. So lots of opportunity to have access. Dr. Renee Walker, thank you. Dr. Lenley Black, thank you so very much. Thank you, Dennis. Thank Good you. to be with you.